So it's me, sorry. Trying to All right. So there's probably not going to be very many people on here, but I'm pretty sure you can see my live video. I'm not sure. I look like hell, sorry. Um it's been a pretty difficult time since the 21st. Uh I got the news. I got the news at about 8 o'clock my time. Um, my mom's not doing all that great. Um, well, she's doing a little bit better now, but we don't know what's going to happen. Um, if my grandparents see this and my dad sees this and my brother sees this, I'm really sorry. Um, I just couldn't hold it at any boy. I've been an emotional wreck in the last few days. I got more CDs from the library. I got my box in from the library, but I haven't had the ability to actually do a video. And I'm sorry. Um, I've barely been reading, honestly. I got into a little bit of a reading slump. And I am really trying. This is really difficult. Um, so my mom. Um, well, Harley and I's mom. Is at the house. Sorry, is in the hospital. Um, they thought it was a heart attack or a stroke. Turns out it wasn't at this point. There's a lot of things I say it could be, but basically right now, she is on a respirator to help her breathe. And that's all I'm really going to say because I don't know how much my brother knows or how much he can handle. And out of respect for my brother, I don't want him to continue to not do good in school because he's doing a really good job in school. He has a trip coming up. Pretty soon. I'm sorry, I look like crap. <laughs> and, um... I've almost caught my mom in the last four days. Six to eight times, two times each day. I haven't been getting much sleep. I've been getting maybe four or five hours of sleep, if that, in between waking up and going back to sleep, waking up, going back to sleep, crying myself to sleep, and by all means, this is not about me, okay, I don't want anybody to think that this is, you know, me crying out for help or sympathy, I don't want your sympathy, but I do want your prayers, if you pray, if you're a religious person, if you're not a religious person, if you can just please, please, please pray, that my mom will get better and she'll be able to be home with my dad and my brother and my brothers. Sorry, but it's just been really difficult. It doesn't even, at times, it doesn't even feel real. It feels like a nightmare. And I'm, like, stuck in this nightmare. And it just, it doesn't feel like reality. It feels like a dream. A bad dream that, you know, she's so sick that she can't breathe on her own. And she's in a, the hospital. I mean, just... On the 20th, the day before this all happened, 
she was literally helping me design my next tattoo for my booktube. Not my booktube, but like for me in general, that would symbolize who I am now. Who I become. My mom has designed almost all my tattoos that are on my body right now. Um, she's been a big part in my tattoo designs. She actually is the one who came up with a few of the designs herself. Sorry, I took them into the person to have that person at the tattoo shop, you know, fix it up a little bit, tweak it a little bit, but it was still my mom's drawings. The one on my chest, the one on my lower back, the one on my arm for my mom, the one on my wrist. I gotta remember where they're all at. I can't remember where all my tattoos are. But, my, but regardless, my mom has had a huge factor in my tattoos. She, you know, just got her own tattoo last year with um, a girl that I went to school with who is like a daughter to her. And I'm really proud about that actually because that, you know, I understand now what my mom wants in a daughter. And I'm doing everything I can. But I know my mom still loves me regardless. She was just telling me last week how proud she was of me. That I'm doing everything. Sorry. That I'm doing everything on my own. And I'm doing good. And I'm not on drugs. And I'm not drinking excessively. And, you know, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. And, you know, not taking any government help or anything like that. And how proud she was of me and how much she loved me. I can't help it. I just love my mom so much. She helped me find a book that's coming out soon. My and author, we were going to read that book together. We were going to buddy read the book together. And There's just so much love for us to do. <sighs> I love you, Mom. You need to pull through. I'm doing everything right. I'm not talking to certain people because I know my mom didn't like them, you know. And, I mean, there's only one person I will always talk to that my mom will never like. And that is my best friend, Destiny. My mom will never like her, but that's okay. Because even Destiny is kind of heartbroken about all this right now. Like, she even said, Mom needs to wake up. And my mom doesn't like her. But my mom has impacted so many people's lives. She's helped so many grandparents gain their grandparents' rights and get custody of their grandchildren out of, like, drug homes and things like that. My mom is an amazing woman. She came up with, let's see, she runs a leggings company. Not a company, but she's a co-executive to a leggings company or something. She's part of a leggings company. She has the mommy group on Facebook. She's got the caring cards group on facebook where you send to people that are like in a similar situation so like what we're in right now as a family with her being in the hospital or you know birthday cards and things like that and then she's got her grandparents group and she's helped so many children that's something people don't realize is she adopted my son she did a fantastic job with him. The last text I got from her is that my son, I'm sorry, that Rory, the child that is mine but was adopted by my parents, was technically their son. It's a mess of situation, I know, but the last text I received was Rory pooped on the potty. And my phone was acting up when my 
dad tried calling me to tell me my mom was on her way to the hospital. <sighs> my dad and I, my grandparents and I, we haven't talked as much in so long. And I just really hope that she wakes up soon. And unfortunately for legal situations, I cannot go to Ohio to be there. And I just need my mom. I'm sorry to like those of you who don't have mom. My mom is still young. I'm 25. My mom had me when she was 18. You guys do the math. My poor dad. He is doing the best he can, and I am so proud of him. My grandparents. They dropped everything and came from Florida up to Ohio. To be there for my mom by her side. My aunt and uncle, they took the boys for my dad, so my dad was able to, for the weekend, after everything happened, he was able to go back and forth from Toledo to Ohio, or from Toledo to home to see my mom and keep me updated. And... God, it just breaks my heart. And these are not fake tears, guys. I took my mom for granted. I despised my mom for the longest time. And in this case, you don't know what she got until it's almost gone. She's still there. She's making progress. She still can't breathe on her own. I don't know how long it's gonna be, but this is really Unfortunately, this bad thing has brought the family back together. We're all communicating again. I mean, we were communicating before. The one good thing is my mom and I fixed our relationship. The bad thing is, since 2019, she just had her birthday on the 9th of this month. And the 21st, she's already in the hospital. Not sure what's gonna happen next. We literally have to take things day by day. But she would want me to continue doing my working and continue going and hanging out with friends that are good people. She would want me to continue not to drink, not to do any drugs, like hard drugs or anything. She would want me to continue to read. She would want me to continue to write. She would want me to continue to do videos for you guys. That's what I'm going to do. And that's why I'm here doing live for the first time ever. I'm doing a live and I don't even know how to end this when it's done. I really don't. Oh, shit. I'm not sure how this... Welcome to live chat. Remember to guard your privacy and abide by our community guidelines. Okay. I don't know. But hey, guys. Sorry I'm so emotional. This is me. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead. I'm actually wearing the leggings my mom got me. I've been off and on crying so much. And at one point I wasn't eating. Or sleeping. Or doing anything to keep myself healthy. And now I am. And I think I overdid it a little bit with food today. Um, tuna and yams. Y'all mix very well, even if the yams were like a dessert and tuna was the dinner. Like one after the other just doesn't mix very well. This uh, live video is going to be long, and if you made it through my blubbering mess, which it's going to go in between, honestly. Um, my name is Ashlyn, this is my channel, and I am doing this because this is what my mom would want me to be doing right now.
instead of being emotional and unconditionally slobbering mess. So, okay. We're gonna go ahead and get into the book haul. I went, I went to the library twice, well, three times, because I went to get books on everything that my mom's going through right now. And I went to the free library cart, and I also just got some more books that were on display, because they always get you with the books on display at the library. So I hope you can hear me. And, oh, I also got my Walmart beauty box in the mail as well. Open it up and not very impressed, but I'm going to go ahead and get all that gathered and uh, be right back. So give me one second. Sorry, my boyfriend just texted me. Of course I will. What? I don't know. All right. <clears throat> Don't ask. Stay. Don't fall over. Don't fall over yet. Okay. Okay. So. Whew. Sorry. Um, I'm gonna let you guys know ahead of time. I'm in a complete emotional wreck. My medications got me all over the place, especially with what's going on. So I'll be up and then I'll be down and then I'll be up and then I'll be down and then I'll be up and then I'll be down again. And I just started my menstrual cycle, which by the way, reminds me, I get to tell you guys in my next video, not this video, but my next video, the review on the Shark Week Survival Kit box for PMS. But first, let's go ahead and get into the books that I found, uh, and the magazines that I found at the library. So, this is the thing I found. Funny thing is, is this is all actually backwards when you actually look at it. So, when you look at it this way, it says, Wired Welcome to Mirror World. So, it actually is backwards on me. Um, when I physically look at it. But it is a magazine, and it's got all these, like, really cool, like, you know, pictures like that and stuff. And it's got a bunch of numbers and stuff. And I looked in it, and I was like, oh, this is going to be really good to, like, cut stuff out of it and put it in with all my other crap. So, I did. Well, I didn't yet, but I'm going to. So, I picked it up. Next, I have The City of Ember, the first book of Ember by Jean DeProw, and I believe I've heard somebody talk about this before. It's also a major motion picture, Falls 2008. So it looks like this, and I'm pretty sure I've either watched or heard somebody talk about this book before, or maybe I'm just remembering the movie, but I don't remember a movie called The City of Ember. But this is copyright 2003. It's like one of those older ones. It's actually got the chapters right here. And it, it's in bad shape. But all at the same time as well, it's in good shape. Um, just the pages are kind of ripped. But I mean, I picked it up because I was like, who told me about this book? It's young adult science fiction. W.A.W. winner, multi-copies, multi fifth level. So, yeah. I picked it up. Oh, glasses are flying. Alright, next we have Paradise Fever, Growing Up in the Shadow of the New Age, Tommy Tompkins. So it looks like this. And I don't know, it just looked really interesting to me, so I grabbed it. And this one is copyright 1997. 
So it looks interesting. I haven't heard anybody talk about this. And it's also only 286 pages. Oh, the other one is oh, 270. 270 pages forever, and then it's got book two, The People of Sparks, which is book two. And it's got the first chapter of that book right there. Okay. Um, next is uh, by Herbert Marcus, with a new introduction by Douglas Kellner, the classic critic of modern industry society, more than 300,000 copies sold. A bitter cry of social protest fortified by uncommon erudition and rationality from Newsweek. It just looks interesting to me, but yeah, I'm not sure. It is copyright, second edition, oh wait, first edition, 1964, second edition, 1991. It's from the Beacon Press, and it is 257 pages. So, it just looked interesting to me. This one really sparked my eye, because it's just called Chantel. And it also has this beautiful sticker from the library of, and it doesn't say, <laughs> but it is copyright 1981. And it even says like in the first page, there's a cast of characters and it names all the characters like Chantel, Jean de Vaux, Ma Brain, the Lady White. Sir Peregrine Wait, Dixon Sale, Rose Sale, Antoine de Vale, Gerald de Vale, Stefano, Tamirisk, Von Uberha Uberhard, Charles Von Uberhard, Richard William, Lisa, and Clarissa, their children, Baroness Lisa Von Uberhard, Anne Laid, Julia Laid, Dorothy Dorcas. Elsie Duck Du Bois, Duchess Du Bois, Fleur Du Bois, their daughters Amy Rose, Jean, Jenny, Jean, Suzanne, Noel, and Luke De Servan, and then a bunch of other people, Princess Camille Falois. So I mean it looks really interesting. It's like basically set up like a actual like play. And there is 401 pages to it so it's kind of older and i really liked it and also it was like pink and then this navy and then just chantelle and when it i opened it and saw that it was like a play i was like oh my gosh i have to have it so i got it <laughs> so there's that next is mommy tracked by whitney gaskell author of testing kate Sometimes moms need playdates too, and it looks like this. Um, it's a novel, and it is oh, testing Kate, she, myself, and I, true love and other lies, pushing 30. So there's other books by this person. And it is copyright 2007, and it is 340, 340 pages plus a 1, 2, oh wait, oh wait, oh wait, oh wait, oh wait, oh wait, okay, 349 pages. And then her other one, Don't Miss Whitney Gaskell's Testing Kate, available from Delta Trade Paperbacks. And it has the first chapter of Testing Kate in there as well. I love when books do that, like give you like an introduction into the next book of the series. So I'm assuming that, I don't know. I don't know, I saw it and I thought, hey, it says mommy on it and it looks cute. So 
this one I think I'm the most interested to read and that's because I love Christian rap if anybody knows Christian rap you should know Lecrae and this is unashamed Lecrae and this is his cover face on the book okay and it's a time Grammy winning rap artist Lecrae learn the lesson if you live for people's acceptance you'll die from their rejection through more than his share of adversity, childhood abuse, drugs, and alcoholism, a stint in rehab, an abortion, and an unsuccessful suicide attempt. So this is basically like his, um, you know, his biography, basically. Yeah. And this is copyright 2016. For Big Mama, I am the man I am today because of the seeds you sowed in my life. So I cannot wait to read about my favorite person, Mr. Lecrae, who has a wonderful family. If you look at that, that is just so beautiful. There's like all these illustrations in here and they're in color, which isn't very normal. And there's letters in here and just everything into his actual, like actual life. It's even a note section and then you can take your own notes. Um, he's a Christian rapper, guys. So it says, Lecrae is a Grammy Award winning hip-hop artist whose 2014 album, Anomaly, debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, rap, digital, Christian, gospel, and independent charts. His seven studio albums and mixtapes have sold more than 1.5 million copies. He has been nominated for five Grammy Awards, including a win in 2013 for Best Gospel Album, as well as 14 dub awards one billboard music award nomination and received both a soul train music award and a bet hip-hop awards nomination lecrae resides in atlanta georgia with his wife and three children see gospel and christian so i saw this and i saw lecrae and i was like oh, i have to have it and so i grabbed it and i'm really glad I'm, because it's in such good condition like nobody's ever really touched it and then next, I came across Absence of Mind by Marilyn Robinson. And it's a Pulitzer Prize winning author of Gilead, Housekeeping, and Home. And this one is a whopping, get off it, 158, can you stop? 158 pages, and I want to say it is copyright. I'm going to make you get in here. Uh, 2010 copyright. So this is what it looks like. It's another one that just really spoke to me. Clouds and prettiness and all that stuff. So shows what my mom's going through. By the way, this is who I'm yelling at. Say hi. Say hi. Ah. I love you. Be here. Say I love you guys. Wow. I love you. I'm trying to get her meow, but she won't do it. Meow, yeah, baby. Oh my god. Okay. 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 Then next, I got this really nice one, too. It's by Robin Schneider. Get down. You're moving the camera. No. No. Lay down. Lay down and get down. Pick one. Okay, bye. Sorry. Um, it is called The Beginning of Everything by Robin Schneider. And it's yellow. And I mean yellow. <laughs> Um, okay. It is copyright 2013 and 320 or 335 pages. And she's really pretty, guys. Like, I'm excited. And the really cool thing, too, is the dust jacket um, is almost like the actual original. This is the original cover of it. With the blue lettering going down the bind. 
or the spine. So, but I like the dust jacket on it and it's in really good shape. So I don't think it ever really got checked out from the library at all. But it was definitely probably not a library book. I wonder if this one was just donated or set in there. So there's that one. And then the final one from the free library cart was the complete, wait, spelled wrong, Werewolf and Other Tales of Fantasy and Science Fiction by Anthony Boucher. And I don't know, this just looks really interesting to me. This is what it looks like. And complete is spelled complete as in comp and then eat. So, yeah. And it's got one of these stickers on it that says, um, class number F, date received, 2-19-1970. So, it's a pretty old book. It is a 1969 book. And it just, the cover spoke to me. I mean, look at this. It's even got those original, like, card holder things. But, oh my gosh, I was, like, shocked. I'm gonna have to read it at some point, but I really like the cover. It was really cool looking to me. Okay, so, that is it for that portion. Now, this live thing, I hope it works. I don't know. Otherwise, I just wasted my time. Now, this next part, I'm going to wait for it. I'm going to do the Walmart Beauty Books. I'm wondering if I should just do that separately. I might just do that separately. Okay. Um, these are going to be out of order because obviously the live is going to go up first most likely. And then the other ones from like a couple days ago before my mom went into the hospital is going to go up. Um, and then I'll do the Walmart Beauty Box tonight and put that one up tomorrow and... Sometime tomorrow, because I have court tomorrow. But anyway, the first book I found was one from my, my TBR, by the way. And that is American Psycho Brett Easton Ellis. So, yes, guys, I finally got it. It's on my TBR, too. That's the funny thing. And this thing is... 400 pages yeah 399 pages and it's just like the movie it says and it is copyright 1991 but we just got it in October of last year and it was finally like you know right there so we could actually see it on display so that's pretty cool Next, I was looking in the same section, and I came across this little thing right here. Interesting. Does anybody know who that is? Well, if you don't know who that is, it is Mr. Manson himself. And this is the New York Times bestseller, Manson, The Life and Times of Charles Manson by Jeff Ginn. And this is a tour de Force of a biography, definitive, compulsively readable, and it's a New York Times book review. And it got a notable book of the year book review from the New York Times. It's a big honker. It's got illustrations and it's actually got a section where you can see like the bibliography and everything. And that's 475 pages. I am looking forward to this, and I'm probably going to renew it a few times because it's going to take me a while to get through, like, all that nasty shit he did to those people. But I'm, like, I don't know if anybody knows, but I'm into serial killers big time, and so is my friend. All right, next we got Dear Martin, a novel, a must-read by Nick Stone. And this is Justice is a Good Kid, an Honor Student, an Honor's Way to Yale. So why is he the, the one in handcuffs? So this is what it looks like. And I don't know exactly, like, the synopsis of it. It was just another one on display. 
from 2017. And it is, I want to say, about 208, no, 210 pages. Yeah, 210 pages. And I just, I have to have it. It looks interesting. I mean, Dear Martin, and then it says a must read. That's Angie Thomas. And then Raw and Gripping, Jason Reynolds. The back it says his name is Justice. How interesting is that? He's a good kid, an honor student, on his way to Yale. So he's on his way to college, but he's the one in handcuffs. So I was like, mm hmm. And then it says absolutely incredible, honest, gut wrenching, painfully timely, and deeply moving. An undeniably real feast of fury and forgiveness. A mic drop of truth. Hats off. Okay. It's from the co author of All American Boys, which I need to check out that one too. Will charm your socks off and smash your heart to pieces. Um, that was also Albert Tolly, award winning author of Simon vs. the Homo sapiens agenda, so that's always good. Um, oh, the first one was The Hate You Give uh Angie Thomas. So that's who Angie Thomas is. My bad guys. Okay, let's just start this one over. All right, so absolutely incredible, honest, gut-wrenching is Angie Thomas, number one New York Times bestselling author of The Hate You Give. Painfully timely and deeply moving, Jody Picoult, number one New York Times bestselling author. An undeniably real feast of fury and forgiveness. That's from Jason Reynolds, bestselling co-author of All American Boys, which I need to check out. Um, a mic drop of truth, hats off. And that's also from Brennan Kiley, best-selling co-author of the All American Boys. Will charm your socks off and smash your heart to pieces. Becky Albertalli, award-winning author of Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, which I still have to read. Unflinching with grace and humor. Jeff Zenter, award-winning author of The Serpent King. And beautiful and timely. Donnelly Clayton, co-author of Tiny Pretty Things. So there's a lot of recommended people in here and it looks really good uh boldly tackles american race relations in a stunning debut so it talks a lot about diversity so i really can't wait to read this for that fact what are you doing one second No, go away. Stay off the counter. Okay, sorry. She was on the counter. Oh, that is like a really bad angle. Okay, whatever. We'll figure it out. Move. Okay, sorry. We'll figure it out. All right, next I got another one from my TBR, but this is the graphic novel version. I didn't even know they uh, excuse me, had the graphic novel version, so I'm interested to see this one. And this is Speak, the graphic novel. Um, Lori Holt Anderson, artwork by Emily Carroll. Looks like this. And all the back says is I said no. So this one, it's literally just like a graphic novel. It found me. Ooh. I don't know how many pages are here. There's a big chunk, though, let me tell you. So there's that. I'm excited for. <gasps> I'm so happy I, we got this finally. Next. Oh my gosh. I've been wanting to read this. I've been seeing so many things about it. And I was like, oh, I need to read it still. So this is. Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekkanen, New York Times bestselling authors of The Wife Between Us, which is another one on my TBR, I believe, that I want to read. And this is an anonymous girl. Ah! I finally got it, guys. It literally just came out this month to our library, 219. So I'm like freaking out. It's a bestseller. It was in our new library book section uh, downstairs. And I Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. 
it's freaking huge though it's in part but oh my gosh it's so beautiful and nobody's read it yet i just picked it up today and ah, i love it it's 371 pages so i oh my gosh i can't wait i'm so excited i finally got this oh my gosh okay Calm down. I know. Stop staring at me like that, Mara. Like, oh, I'm not staring at you. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, I'm like, ah, I'm so happy for this. Like, oh, uh, can we, like, just for a second, like, look at this cover, guys. It, like, can you imagine, like, an anonymous girl? I wonder what it's about. I've heard that it's really, really good, and it's about something and something, and then somebody says about something else, and then somebody says it's about something else. So I was like, oh, I have to. So, I will find out. It is, okay, none of these are authors that I know, so I'm not going to say who said what. But, um, praise for The Wife Between Us. A fiendishly smart cat and mouse thriller. Deliciously clever. Great big plot twist. Check. Film right snapped up. Check. He has already emerged as one of the most popular books of the year, captivating readers with its shockingly twisty narrative. The best domestic suspense novel since Gone Girl. Buzzy, plot twists abound. Jaw-dropping, unforgettable, shocking. Suspenseful and spring-loaded. Masterful. Buckle up because you won't be able to put this one down. And you'll be taken on a suspenseful roller coaster that will keep you riveted until the last page. I don't know about you, but that sounds amazing. Um, seeking women ages 18 to 32 to participate in a study on ethics and morality. Generous compensation. Anonymity guaranteed. When Jessica Ferris signs up for a psychology study conducted by the mysterious Dr. Shields, she thinks all she'll have to do is answer a few questions, collect her money, and leave. Question one, could you tell a lie without feeling guilt? Question two, have you ever deeply hurt someone you care about? Question three, should a punishment always fit the crime? From the authors of the blockbuster bestseller, The Way Between Us comes an electrifying new novel about doubt, passion, and just about how much you can trust someone. So I'm over the moon right now about this i love this i'm so happy all right and then the last one i got we almost didn't get because hey get off it sorry my cat's getting into shit as always when i'm doing a video hey i'm gonna throw a pillow at you yeah that's what i thought okay and the last one i got i actually have read in the past and <laughs> nobody's probably gonna understand it or has seen it but chopsticks anybody has anybody read chopsticks it's literally just like a bunch of pictures and it tells a story of it all like yeah so that's what it looks like and it's by jessica anthony and rodrigo coral and it's a novel basically and it's just a novel through like a whole bunch of pictures and i am obsessed with it elizabeth sorry i am obsessed with it and um let's see it says gloria is a piano prodigy after her mother died she retreated into her music her father raised her with the goal of Playing sold-out shows at Carnegie Hall and across the globe. Rolling and lonely, Glory is drawn to Frank, who moves in next year. She loses herself in his paintings and drawings, mixed CDs, and late-night IM conversations. Soon, Frank becomes both her connection to the world and her escape from reality. Before long, Glory is unable to play anything but the song Chopsticks, F and G notes moving closer together and farther apart. Now, Glory has disappeared, but nothing is what it seems, and we must decide what is real, what is imagined, and what has been madness all along. Like the young... What? Oh, it's not even readable, like legible right now, but... 
Yeah, it's got like a whole bunch of like beautifully done pictures and letters and it just, it says so much. Like, remember what our love is, we will take root again, G. And like, she's sending him all these clues to come and find her. And it's just so beautiful. I absolutely love it. And I love reading it and looking at the pictures all over again. But that is the end of my library haul. So, yeah. Um, oh, and spoiler alert, I am currently reading, I don't know where the hell it went, but I am currently reading The Stalker Chronicles. I'm going to kick a cat's ass. I am currently reading The Stalker Chronicles. Um, oh my gosh, what is the other one? Uh, the Dictionary... The Dictionary of the Disturbed, of a Disturbed Girl or something like that. And then there's one more I'm reading, or I just started or something. I completed 500 words or less, and that was really amazing, by the way. Um, it already went back to the library, actually. It was literally 500 words or less on each page, and it was in the verse version. So it wasn't actually like a book with like words next to each other. I mean, they were next to each other, but not in paragraphs, more in poetry verse. So, but none of it rhymed or was poetry. So, but it was really good. I did not expect that ending. But this is the end of my life. Um, just go ahead and pray for my mom, please. Um, she could really use it. I know my family could really use the strength to get through this. Um, hopefully in the end we have a good result instead of a tragic one, but it has been a tragedy on the family. I can tell you that right now. So with all of that being said, I hope and pray that you have a blessed day.